name's Paul Flickinger and I teach sculpture here at the Rustic School of Art at Western Michigan University in Kalamazoo. Um, and this is a group of my advanced sculpture students who were given the assignment to produce a self-portrait, life-size. The folks from Loom Life Corporation have very kindly stepped forward to give us a hand with this process. Uh, I wanted the students to have an opportunity to make rubber molds because that's what happens in the real world of art. Uh, so we'll produce rubber molds from the, the plasticine sculpture and we will um, then be able to cast those in any number of materials. They could use hot wax for a bronze casting. Um, they could use, uh, we'll probably at least begin with uh, plaster casting. Um, let them have a real world experience of using rubber to produce molds. We started by making a foam armature that's just kind of the basic shape of the form we'll be making. Uh, then we used uh, plasticine and oil-based clay to go over the armature and that's what we actually sculpted with and added all of our details. Once our sculpture was complete we mixed up a thinner batch of silicone and made a a skin mold to get in all the details of the sculpture. About four hours later we were able to begin building the second layer of silicone just to thicken up the mold. Every other layer of silicone that we would add we would dye them or dye one and then have one undyed uh, so that we wouldn't miss any spots when we were adding the layers. Uh, our last layer of silicone we put on uh, pretty thick and then we cut up little bits of already hardened silicone and we put them on top of the thick silicone while it was drying so that the mother mold would actually lock into the silicone mold. About 24 hours later we were able to start building our mother mold. We started by making a flange on the silicone mold out of clay to have a starting place to separate the two sides of the mother mold. We covered that then in Vaseline. Once we were done with that, we mixed up a thick batch of plaster, and once it was set well enough, we applied it to the silicone mold to start building the, that one half of our mother mold. Uh, about an hour later, that plaster would be cured enough to, be, be, uh, to work with, and we would remove the flange, uh, put Vaseline on that exposed plaster to keep it from locking to the second half of the mold. Then we mixed up our second batch of plaster equally thick and uh, put that on the other side of the mold to make the second half of the mother mold. About an hour later we uh, would remove the foam and the plasticine inside of both of the molds. Once everything was kind of out of the mold and we had got it open, uh, we would clean out the silicone mold just in case there was left leftover plasticine in there. Once this, the inside of the silicone mold was clean, we were able to put it back inside of its mother mold to make it one solid thing again. Uh, then I dusted uh, the inside with aluminite, alumilite bronzing powder to give it a bronze effect on the outside of the form. We then mixed up a batch of plaster uh, to help with the bronzing powder. We also added some black dye to the plaster just to add that effect, um, but we mixed up the black plaster, poured it in, and made the first part. Or later, we were able to take the master mold apart and then remove the rubber mold from the part, and then we could do any finishing touches, um, paint it maybe, um, just kind of add any details that it might be lacking. But because of the great flexibility of these silicone molds, we were able to really just peel it right off of our of our sculptures without any damage to any of the details that we had created in originally.